Adam Gase seems to be pursuing a world record speedrun for getting every single one of a team's fans to just forfeit their will to live. Disappointment is obviously a natural part of life for Jets fans, but you've gotta admit there's something truly special about just how little regard Gase seems to have for success of any kind. So much so that even protests that were attempting to get him fired are just complete failures. Last year, before the 2019 season, I actually made a video discussing ways in which the Jets look to be building a talented young core, with new weapons and Sam Darnold hopefully developing, but one thing that eluded me in my misguided hope was the fact that Adam Gase is the NFL coaching equivalent of two kids standing on each other's shoulders in a trench coat. Because in just over a season's time under Gase, their young quarterback of the future is now regressing in his third year, while others from his class dominate or are hitting their stride. And the culture in the Jets locker room is so depressing that it makes the rest of New Jersey seem like a nice place to spend time. Now obviously, the Jets problems run far, far deeper than Gase alone. I mean, we are talking about the Jets here. But ultimately, when you look through Gase's career and history over the last near decade, it's clear that he's always been simply overmatched as a head coach. So if the Jets want to get out of this own grave they're digging themselves, I'd personally start by putting down the shovel. That's why today, I want to lay out not only the reasons for Gase to be fired sometime, probably around yesterday, but also why anyone who hires him for another head coaching job in the future should be tried for attempted murder of their organization. That is a little heavy, so before we get into the details of Gase's doomed reign so far, I would like to take a moment of refuge and talk to you about this week's sponsor over at Blinkist. Now, I like learning new things, as I'm sure a lot of you out there do, but a big problem that I have is finding new books that I want to read and then never actually finding the time to, you know, read them. Fortunately, Blinkist completely eliminates that problem. They've boiled down over 4,000 nonfiction titles spanning all genres into 15-minute blinks, which are text or audio summaries of the key points of the work, so you're able to pull out the most valuable information in the most efficient way possible and then just apply it into your life. For instance, while I was eating lunch today, I just listened through the blink for finding meaning in an imperfect world, which was, you know, pretty relevant. Not to mention, if you want to go even deeper on a subject, they offer full audiobooks as well. So if you're interested in a succinct way to get more productivity and knowledge out of each day, head to the link in the description and on screen right now, and the first 100 viewers who take advantage will receive a one-week free trial and a 25% discount if you decide you want to continue on after that. So a huge thank you to Blinkist for helping to make this video happen on a very imperfect website. And now, since we're back on the subject of imperfect, let's get back to Mr. Gase. Like any business, networking skill and connections can go a long way in the NFL coaching sphere, and oftentimes, being qualified is equally as important as just being in the right place at the right time. Like how sons of prominent coaches are able to get gigs for not a lot more than their name value, or how there was a span where you too could have been hired as a head coach if you had once had lunch with Sean McVay. So what's the point of mentioning all this? Well, because Adam Gase is an opportunist amongst opportunists, and he didn't just leverage his connections to get a head coaching gig, rather his connections are the only thing that are still keeping him employed. That's not to say they aren't good connections though, because the height of Gase's career came as offensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos in 2013, where he was able to utilize Peyton Manning to create the most high-powered offense in NFL history, averaging nearly 38 points per game. A tie like that is a very powerful thing to have, and he's been able to have Manning's recommendation make waves in his favor, even in spite of the fact that Gase has never been able to replicate any success that comes close to that season. I mean, I guess it's not impossible that Gase was the reason for one of the greatest passers of all time leading one of the greatest passing offenses of all time, and then every mediocre to awful year Gase had after that just became an outlier, but um... I'm pretty sure that's not how outliers work. Instead, here's a little bit better look at the timeline. Adam Gase successfully rode the momentum of that 2013-14 run as Manning's offensive coordinator to another O-coordinator job with John Fox in Chicago the following year, where he improved Jay Cutler and that offense from 21st in the NFL to 21st in the NFL. 
After that though, he was able to score a head coaching gig in Miami where he'd take the team to the wild card round in his first year before sinking the team back into mediocrity and eventually being fired following the 2018 season only to immediately land on his feet once again with the New York Jets, a tenure which, so far, has been splendid. I mean, credit to his ability to market himself, because to be honest with you, I've really never seen a coach fail forward more impressively than Gase has. That term, offensive genius, that he was quickly awarded with after his 2013 season in Denver has easily gotten more mileage than any team bus in the last 50 years, considering that the offenses he's called since that didn't feature Peyton Manning under center have finished 21st, 24th, 25th, 31st, and 32nd in total yards. It's a pretty impressive downward trend, but three games into 2020, he appears to be trying to continue it, considering he's now the first coach in NFL history for his first three games in back-to-back -back seasons to feature less than 20 points and 300 yards of offense in each game. But I mean, to his credit, it is going to be pretty difficult to finish below dead last. So the only logical question to ask is why? I mean, Gase has dealt with his fair share of woes when it comes to rosters and injury bugs, but that can't excuse 10 of 12 losses as head coach being more than double-digit defeats. I mean, at some point, the guy in charge has got to answer for that. One of the most apparent problems is that Gase is insanely stubborn on and off the field, and the rigidness of his particular scheme more often than not jams square pegs into round holes rather than building around the talent of his players. Modern offenses have left those that are resistant to change completely in the dust, and Gase's struggles have been no exception to that, with a complete unwillingness to make life easier for his young quarterback by using things like pre-snap motion to help diagnose defenses, as the Jets ranked 29th in pre-snap motion in the NFL through 2019 and still continue to trail the league in 2020. Instead, staples of his game plans include a heavy-handed dose of runs directly up the middle, a favorite on second and long, and an incredible knack for simultaneously overcalling short passing concepts while also dropping the occasional play-in that takes impossibly long to develop. It's the kind of scheme that places players in an uphill battle from before the ball is even snapped, with most of the pressure placed on Sam Darnold to execute, while also being pressured by every defensive front in the league due to their offensive line. These issues are tendencies that have followed Gase year to year as closely as his own shadow has, and he's made note that he has a particular way of doing things as head coach and has never planned to evolve from that especially after being emboldened by immediately being hired after getting dropped by Miami. And listen, I get the arguments. The Jets' weapons are depleted, Darnold is still seeing ghosts in year three, but the entire point of Gase being hired in the first place was so Sam Darnold would have a legitimate chance to develop into an elite quarterback before his rookie contract was up. And instead, all they've managed to do is just fail each other at every turn, which is a quintessentially Jets coaching romance. But Gase's struggles to adapt to his players don't only manifest in the quarterback room. One of the other biggest examples of this is in Le'Veon Bell, an all-pro running back talent who signed with the Jets in 2019, a move Adam Gase took issue with at the time given he didn't personally want to pay a running back. Gase being on the running back talent doesn't matter train is fine and well, but he outright refused to use Bell to his potential through the entire season despite him being a versatile runner and receiver out of the backfield. Instead, he used his electric playmaking ability to run the ball inside the tackles an insane 68% of the time, rather than allowing Bell to get in space, with their outside rush attempts ranking 28th in all of football. I mean, when Le'Veon Bell goes down with an injury and Frank Gore replaces him with little to no change in the running back's role in the offense, then you've got a pretty serious problem. Now would also be the time that I mentioned there's been a pretty hilarious trend of offensive players that have finally been freed of Gase's system to go on to have a career year the very next season. Whether you want to look at Ryan Tannehill, who after being made to look like a lost cause with Gase in Miami, went on to lead the league in passer rating and yards per attempt en route to leading Tennessee to the AFC Championship game. Or maybe you want to look at Kenyon Drake, who went from being locked in a timeshare with the Dolphins to exploding for over 800 total yards and 8 scores through 8 games with the Cardinals in 2019. 
and to complete the trifecta of offensive players, you've also got Devontae Parker, who albeit was healthy for the first time in a while, but still managed to have a career year with the Dolphins the very moment Adam Gase left, racking up over 1,200 yards and 9 scores with Josh Rosen under center for much of the season. So even in spite of the adversity Gase's rosters have faced, it's become more and more difficult to argue that his system doesn't outright stifle the talent of his players by using them in roles they just aren't ideal in. But the fact of the matter is certain players just aren't given Gase's time of day, whether that's on or off the field. Sure, he's had his few favorite guys over the years, Jake Cutler, Brock Osweiler, Frank Gore, but then he's butted heads with countless other talents like Jarvis Landry, who felt like Gase sent him to die by trading him to Cleveland in 2017, or the aforementioned Lev Bell saga, which continued into the 2020 offseason, and most recently Jamal Adams, who completely burned down the house before being shipped off to Seattle, laying into Gase for how he felt he didn't share a connection with the majority of the team, and delegated the difficult parts of leading a losing franchise off to his other coaches not helping that internal dialogue have been Gase's interactions with the ever-aggressive New York media, where he has consistently struggled to provide any answers at all beyond blaming the execution of his players or other external factors other than himself on a weekly basis. At the end of the day, things aren't getting better for the Jets until Gase is somewhere else in the NFL with his handcrafted offense the worst in football, a defense that feels estranged and worn thin even at the start of games, and a culture that sees blame thrown around by the head coach and individual clashes on a regular basis, it's hard to find a single bright spot anywhere in Gase's management of the organization. At this point, arguing to keep him in the head coaching role for the sake of stability for Sam Darnold is like trying to argue that a couple that doesn't have a single fiber in common should stay married for the sake of the kids. So if you ask me, it's been time to rip off the band-aid for a while now, and who knows, maybe by the time this video reaches you, it might have already happened. And while I wouldn't wish his head coaching abilities on any team, it's not impossible for Adam Gase to salvage his career as a coordinator somewhere and try to recapture the hype that made him lose his way in the first place. However, I'm not quite sure that Jets fans still watching this train wreck here in 2020 could ever feel the same way. Because for them, it doesn't matter when Adam Gase is fired at this point. Anytime is already too late.